final solution to the Jewish question was the Nazi operation to murder every single Jew that they could find and they could get their hands on, including everything Jewish that they could find and destroy. Historians to this day are not sure of an exact date when Hitler and the Nazi regime decided to embark on the final solution. In fact, for years, for decades, historians were divided into two schools of thought that called themselves the intentionalists and the functionalists. The intentionalists argued that it was always the intention of Hitler and the Nazi regime to murder the Jews, and it was built into the Nazi regime based on Nazi ideology. Whereas the functionalists argued they reached the conclusion that they needed to kill the Jews only at some point deep into World War II. Now, one of the uh, issues that uh, prevented the resolution of this debate was the fact that there is no known Hitler order, not written nor verbal command that has been recorded anywhere that can tell us when Hitler reached that decision, although it is clear that it was a Hitler decision. Two central documents illustrate the debate. On January 25, 1939, the foreign ministry wrote a memorandum, and in that memorandum, it is very clear that the policy was emigration. All the Jews of the Third Reich should leave Germany. Five days later, in his infamous speech before the Reichstag, the German parliament, Hitler seems to contradict what the foreign ministry had just written, where he threatens that if there will be a war, the war that we know he's already planning, then this will bring about not the victory of Jewry, but as he says, the extermination of the Jewish race in Europe. Wenn es dem international Finanzjudentum in und außerhalb Europas gelingen sollte, die Völker noch einmal in einen Weltkrieg zu stürzen, dann wird das Ergebnis nicht die Bolschewisierung der Erde und damit der Sieg des Judentums sein, sondern die Vernichtung der jüdischen Rasse in Europa. And in these two documents we have an encapsulation of those decades of debate between the intentionalists and the functionalists. Nazi policies towards the Jews in the pre-war period were aimed at the total removal of Jews from German society and ultimately their removal from Germany and the Third Reich entirely. The Nazis embarked on economic measures against the Jews, massive violence against Jews, destroying stores and homes and so on. They embarked on measures that socially separated the Jews from society. They passed laws that took away the Jews' rights and citizenship in society, ultimately aiming to get them all out. And with the outbreak of the war, their policies now addressed all the Jews of Europe. And ultimately, this coalesced into the final solution to the Jewish question. With the German invasion of Poland on September the 1st of 1939, we see clear evidence that Nazi Germany was now potentially genocidal. They immediately embarked on the murder of tens of thousands of people inside of Poland, among them many thousands of Jews. They embarked on separating the Jews from Polish society in the most radical way. Mass arrests, separation physically, taking away all of their economic potential, rounding them up for forced labor, massive relocations of populations on the scales of hundreds of thousands of people. And the Nazis began to concentrate Jews in many places into ghettos as stepping stones towards another policy. And they were looking for some sort of territorial solution to the Jewish question. Where could they send these millions of Jews now under their rule? They considered a reservation in the area of Lublin. They considered sending all the Jews to the island of Madagascar. Madagascar where at that time 25,000 people were living and that was the infrastructure and they were going to send millions. The consequences were clear. Tens of thousands had already died. Many more would die. But this was not yet the final solution to the Jewish question. The systematic murder of the Jews began with the German invasion of the Soviet Union on June the 22nd of 1941, Operation Barbarossa. Following literally on the heels of the invading German army, 
four special units of the SS and police, mobile task forces called in German Einsatzgruppen, entered the fray, spread out from north to south, and began systematically shooting Jews into mass graves. By the end of the summer, tens of thousands of Jews had been shot. Thus, by the fall of 1941, we have many tens of thousands of men, German, Austrian, and local, who were involved in the killing of the Jews of the Soviet Union. We find during the course of 1941 that an atmosphere of murder, a genocidal atmosphere, had developed in Germany, both at the center of policymaking in Berlin and among the men who were actually carrying out the murder in the Soviet Union. Looking at the development of the final solution, we need to ask, where do we see and when evidence that the murder spread beyond the Soviet Union? And we find several tracks. First of all, allies of Germany, Romania and Croatia. Romania, for example, by the end of the murder operation had murdered on its own between 300,000 and 400,000 Jews, both Romanian Jews and Jews in Ukraine and in a brutality that even the murderers of Einsatzgruppe D complained to Berlin about the Romanians' bloodthirsty murder. The Ustasha regime in Croatia identified enemies, Serbs, Jews, and the Roma, or gypsies as they're popularly known, and murder without German intervention beginning in the summer of 1941. Parallel to the murder that began in Romania and Croatia in the summer of 1941, we need to also ask ourselves, where do we see evidence in Germany among German leaders or men in the field of development towards a final solution? And there were parallel tracks. One of those tracks begins in Lublin with the SS and police commander Odilo Globocznik. We know that he created a think tank of intellectuals and his staff by the end of the summer of 1941 who began planning and they reached a whole idea that suggested to Globocznik that within Poland, if you want to kill Jews, what you need to do is not have the murderers chase after the victims, but bring the victims to the murderers and kill them in a sealed, top-secret installation. What method would they use? This he borrowed from the euthanasia project, the T4 operation in Germany, where he learned from them and from officers that came from there to Lublin to meet with him that gas chambers using carbon monoxide exhaust from an engine would be an efficient, clean, cheap way to kill the Jews. We also know that a special unit of the SS was created in order to plan an alternate method of murder that would operate alongside of the mass shootings. And what they began to look into under the command of SS Colonel Walter Rauf was gas vehicles, gas vans that would asphyxiate the Jews as the vehicle would drive around. We know that on September the 3rd of 1941, the first experimental gassing at Auschwitz took place, where several hundred Soviet prisoners of war were murdered using Zyklon B gas, which became the method of murder at Auschwitz. We also know that within Germany, discussions began to deport the Jews of the Third Reich from Germany and Austria to the east. The east meant the Soviet Union, although the first group that was sent out in October of 1941 was actually sent to the ghetto in Lodz, and the rest were sent towards Riga and Minsk and other places in the Soviet Union. In Berlin, in July 1941, SS General Reinhard Heydrich Himmler's most important deputy in dealing with Jewish policy, approached Hermann Goering, who was at that time the second most powerful man in Germany, and asked him for authorization to follow through with all the ideas they had in Germany regarding the Jews. On January 20th, 1942, Reinhard Heydrich convened a meeting of government officials and SS and police officials in Wannsee, a suburb of Berlin, to discuss the coordination of the final solution. This meeting followed months of research, the approval first by Goering and then by Hitler of the feasibility study that Heydrich and his men had prepared, 
and the beginning of the construction of the death camps of Belzhets and Chelmno that had begun around November the 1st of 1941. Following Van Zee, more camps were constructed, such as Sobibor and Treblinka. Deportations began to Chelmno in December 1941. Deportations began to the other camps in March of 1942. And by the end of 1942, Jews from all over Europe had been brought to the camps parallel to the shooting murders in the Soviet Union. And by the end of 1942, some four million Jews had already been murdered. Thus, to sum up the development of the final solution, we see that during the course of the war, and particularly following the German invasion of the Soviet Union in the summer of 1941, Nazi Germany developed and perfected its genocidal capabilities, which culminated in a continent-wide operation that destroyed Jewish communities in their entirety, and by the end of the war, had murdered some six million Jews. <laughs>